Hi there. Well, I recently bought a batch of 10 of these Turnigy Nanotech 2200 milliamp hour three cell battery packs, 10 of them, and decided to do some tests on these batteries with regards to the breaking in concept. Uh, there's some scattered information on this online and a few manuals I've seen, none in the Turnigy documentation that I've seen, but there seems to be at least some plausibility for the idea of breaking in a LiPo battery by charging and discharging it gently at the beginning of its life cycle. So I've allocated five of these packs that I'm going to break in and five that I'm not, and then I'll track their internal resistance and overall performance over time. So what I'll do is I'll take uh, five of these packs and just charge and fly them normally, and then I'll take these other five, which I've numbered and also uh, cataloged by numbering the ends there, and I will charge these uh, at 1C and discharge at 1C three times, and then I'll charge and discharge them at 2C discharge rate uh, two more times, so for five total cycles. There doesn't seem to be any exacting science on breaking in a battery, but this seems to be an easily replicable uh, means of doing it. And so if it works, uh, maybe I can recommend it. And if it doesn't work, uh, I can tell you that it didn't work, at least on these packs. I also wanted to take the opportunity to test a few of the um, accuracies and capabilities of this Turnigy AccuCell charger and this uh, Hobby King watt meter. And essentially, I'll be testing the milliamp hour drain on these batteries as I charge and discharge them uh, relative to one another and see, essentially, do they come in close. Uh, they may both be high, they may both be low, but I'm just looking to see if they're not really far apart from one another. And I'd also like to test a concept of discharging one battery while charging another battery using this charger, wherein I'll charge it from one pack at this end, and I'll discharge another pack at this end, which will allow me to uh, perform the uh, breaking in process of charging and discharging these uh, five times. Now this charger does have a discharge function that you can use to uh, discharge at a certain rate uh, down to a certain voltage uh, each battery pack as you break them in, uh, but it gets very hot and I thought it was kind of a waste of energy. So alternatively, what I thought I would do is use one charged battery as the 12 volt voltage source and uh, you discharge that one while charging another one this charger is typically operated off of 12 volts derived from a car battery or an AC-DC 12 volt converter or a solar uh, derived bench uh, power, but I'm going to just clip it to this XT60 connector and use the uh, fully charged battery as the battery source for the um, charging the other battery. But also to test the efficiency of this, I will measure the drainage of milliamp hours from the full battery and then measure the milliamp hours used to charge the uh, second battery and then I will sequence those through one at a time, uh, charge this one to this one, charge this one to that one and so forth and uh, accomplish two steps at once and also kind of see how much uh, energy this charger uses in charging the uh, downstream battery. What I've got here is an XT60 connector uh, hooked to the uh, alligator clips here, um, carefully taped up on the positive lead to prevent shorting out, and I'll just set that aside and start the charging at 2.2 .2 amp hours, and we'll measure the drained milliamp hours here, as well as the milliamp hours uh, put into this battery. So now discharged from battery 1 here is uh, 1475 milliamp hours, and then charged into battery 2 here through the charger 1187 milliamp hours and so there's a, certainly some loss of current there but what I'm going to do is continue to sort of I'm going to use this one to charge uh, the next one and then sort of rotate those through discharging one charging the other and then I'll go back and recharge them again normally and compare just to reconcile and uh, double check that the uh, discharge milliamp hours is correct so here are the results so far and now I've taken the charged battery number five and trying to charge it back to battery number one. However, since the st state of charge started at about 11.5 volts from the factory, um, this uh, didn't have enough juice to get it all the way up to fully charge. You can see the voltage has dropped to 11.2 uh, volts, which is a level I do not like to take my batteries below. So I'll arrest the experiment at this point and add up the numbers. So the practical application of this little experiment where I used one LiPo battery to charge another one in the break-in process was a fairly small advantage of being able to use one as the load for the other during the break-in process, charging one and discharging the other one. But the more interesting data gained from this was the apparent efficiency of this Turnigy AccuCell charger, 
where I measured the amount of milliamp hours discharge from one battery in charging the other one. So in using number one to charge number two, number two to charge number three, three to four, number four to charge number five. These are the percentages of efficiencies, the difference between these milliamp hours of discharge from the charging battery and this many milliamp hours charged into the being charged battery. And these average out to 82% efficiency. And the practicality of that is that if, for example, you're using a car battery or other finite limited uh, battery source with this charger to charge your LiPos perhaps at the field, you may be able to factor in about a 20% loss in the overall milliamp hour capacity in charging your LiPos. The other interesting thing, comparing the milliamp hour discharge and charge rates measured by this uh, Hobby King uh, HK010 uh, watt meter and power analyzer and the charger were that they were on average about 2.96 percent different from one another. That is when discharged measured by the power analyzer and recharged measured by the charger uh, these were the milliamp hours measured by each and they varied by a few percent each time but again an average of about three percent different and that's a pretty acceptable margin so I'm happy with both of these products and uh, it was a fun little experiment hope you got a little bit out of it take care